on the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord, perhaps today is a good day to reflect on what Jesus' return to the Father means to us, that he has fully prepared our way to the Father and that we are never alone. The Holy Spirit is within us and around us as our advocate. Our entrance hymn is, no is number 530, Lift Up Your Hearts to the Lord, number 530. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My friends, let us pause to call to mind our failings so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we, who believe that your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, ascended this day to the heavens, may in spirit dwell already in heavenly realms, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. is thrown to shouts of joy, a prayer of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of is thrown to shouts of joy, a blast of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne in shouts of joy, the Lord of mid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing is thrown to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. Lord, King of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sins by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that men and women die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since through the blood of Jesus we have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way he opened for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a sincere heart and in absolute trust, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope, for he who made the promise is trustworthy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and he blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. They did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, praising God. The Gospel of the Lord.
Friends, peace be with you. On the recent senior trip during our time in New York, we spent some time at the 9-11 Memorial. It was a very emotional and memorable stop for me for one reason or another. And definitely a good reminder of all of the events that happened on that very faithful day. I was reminded, for instance, of the events of American Airlines Flight 93, the one that crashed in Pennsylvania. It was the last plane to be hijacked and the one on which the passengers and crew fought back, or at least the one that were aware that it happened, causing it to crash before it was intended, before its intended target, which might have been even the White House. We might remember hearing that one of the passengers named Todd Beamer was talking to a customer service representative for Airphone, the people who managed the very primitive air, air telephones that they had on, the, on board the plane, telling her that they had been hijacked and informing her of everything that had happened, and then later on telling her that there was a group that were going to storm the cockpit. Right before it all took place, as the phone lay basically with um, this woman and uh, the CIA listening in, he said, let's roll. Both the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles were written by the same author, by a person called Saint Luke. We know this because in the beginning of each of these books, he addresses the writing to a, the same person whose name is Theophilus. The name means lover of God, so it, it might be more of a pen name than an actual person, but who knows, it also could be an actual person named lover of God, Theophilus. There's also a similarity in vocabulary that's used in the stories that are particular to the Gospel of St. Luke and a lot of the stories in the Acts of the Apostles and kind of a, a similar style that you can tell the Gospel writer developing. Anybody who tells stories and kind of puts it in their own words knows how you do this. Still, there are very different goals between the Acts of the Apostles and the Gospel of St. Luke. Obviously, the Gospel seeks to tell the story of, of Jesus, and the Acts of the Apostles seeks to story, tell the story after Jesus of the Apostles, their Acts. <laughs> um, the hinge, however, that holds these two books together is definitely this celebration that we have today, the Ascension of the Lord, which is told in both of the books. Having just heard both accounts in our readings today, you might notice that there are a lot of similarities, but a certain number of very subtle differences. For instance, the Gospel of Luke, which would have been written first, of course, is shorter, and it tells how Jesus fulfills the hope of the Old Testament. Then it says that he's taken up into heaven, and the apostles don't mourn or be sad about the loss of their friend. Instead, they rush back to the temple to preach and await the Pentecost event, which we will celebrate next week. The Acts of the Apostles, in contrast, is longer and contains a lot of more detail. I feel like we kind of saw the abbreviated cliffhanger version in the Gospel of Luke, and then Luke fills in a lot more details in the uh, in the Acts of the Apostles. For instance, in Acts, Jesus situates himself as the fulfillment of prophecy in general, not through the Old Testament, but through John the Baptist. It, it is through baptism in the Holy Spirit, not just John's baptism with water, but baptism in the Holy Spirit, that the Apostles get to see Jesus as the fulfilled promise of the Father. Then, Jesus clarifies for his followers that, he will be, that they will be given power to be witnesses to Jesus. They aren't given a political power or a kind of physical power, but gifts or charisms of healing and, and other gifts that are supposed to be used in service of the community, which is now the body of Christ on earth. Both accounts are strikingly vague on what the ascension actually looked like which you would think there would be a certain number of surprising details, given that it's not every day you see somebody ascend to the Father. Acts says that a, a cloud came and took Jesus up to heaven, but the Gospel of Luke doesn't even mention anything about the cloud. You'd think St. Luke would give us more than just a cloud well, as he's filling in details. For instance, 
Was he flapping his arms as he went up to heaven? Or was he concentrating really, really hard as he went up to heaven? Or, or the opposite, was he just relaxed? Or was he just standing there with his arms by his side? We have no clue. Did he stay vertical the whole time? Was it kind of like, like being beamed up in Star Trek? Or, or did he sort of lay out flat at some point, like God is restfully taking his son up into heaven? Inquiring minds want to know the answers to these questions. Still, possibly the reason why we don't get an answer to this question is what St. Luke says next. Because in the Acts of the Apostles, we hear that there were two angels standing next to the apostles. And they ask a very pointed question. Why are you looking up into the sky? Now, as we hear about these two apostles, we might think about what happened seven weeks ago at the resurrection of Jesus, when in this same Gospel of Luke, two angels appeared to the women, and they also asked a very pointed question. Why do you seek the living among the dead? It was a good thing for us to reflect upon then and a good thing for us to reflect upon now. But similarly, these two inquisitive uh, angels ask a slightly different question. They ask uh, why they're looking up into the sky. After all, Jesus has gone up to heaven, but will return the, like he has gone away. We're not to await a virgin birth in Bethlehem. There won't be a child wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a manger when Jesus comes again. No, he will come back in the same way he went away, in a cloud, fully grown, a dressed adult man. So the question the angels ask, that's good for us to reflect upon today, why are you standing there looking at the sky? got really struck in my craw this week and and made me wonder if maybe Tom Beamer asked that same question when he realized that his plane was hijacked. No more time looking out the window. It's time to act. After all, the disciples aren't just admiring the magnificence of nature and seeing God in that magnificence like we might do while walking along the bluffs of the Mississippi here. They were looking up into the sky hoping that Jesus would come right back like it was a short elevator ride up and back to heaven. But that's not the time, but there's no time for that. The work of God is too pressing to sit staring into the sky. Plus, he just told them that it's going to happen in God's time, not in theirs. I think we all have times when we wish God would hurry up and do something for us. Hurry up and heal a broken arm or leg so that we can get back to our normal lives. Or Hurry up and bring a friend back from far away, safe and sound, so that we can have somebody to talk to and go out to coffee. Or hurry up and give us some dry weather so we can get in the field or get into our gardens or or get the mower out. God tells us to be patient for when it is his time. There's no time for the impatience that comes with demanding it be done on our time, our way. It's time to do the work of the kingdom of God that we can do today and not let anything distract us from that work. Let's roll. During this Easter season, we continue to profess the Apostles' Creed or the Baptismal Creed, which you can find on page 10 of your Breaking Bread hymnal. We pray together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. With faith in his loving mercy, we call upon the Lord to hear our needs and to respond to us with his great love. For the church on earth, 
the body of Christ. May the Spirit of the Lord inspire us as faithful disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of the world, may God's Holy Spirit bestow upon them the gifts of counsel and fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather for farmers and gardeners and those in construction, let us pray to the Lord. For those, of those that are struggling in their faith, may God's grace offer them new hope and strength in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in this faith community suffering any form of loss, may Christ's compassion and our love for them ease their grief. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the peoples of our parishes, the KC Knights and Ladies, and those being remembered in this Mass who have died, Judy Shackle and Alvina and Eldon Stillmuckus, may Jesus, who sits at the right hand, greet them and welcome them into the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we ask you to hear the prayers of your children gathered here today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before Maura announces the song, I'm going to put on the fans. I'm not going to put on the air conditioning. I'm just going to put the fans to get some air moving here in church so we can leave the windows open. The song for the preparation of the gifts is number 405, In Christ Alone, number 405. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son 
Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus Christ the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he had united to himself, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The 
history of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, and now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. See you. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Amen. Our song for communion is number 574, Worthy is the Lamb, 574.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a funeral coming up on Friday, Friday normally would be our time, first Friday of, of adoration, but because of the funeral, we're going to cancel the Mass and cancel the first Friday. However, there still will be adoration out at St. Peter and Paul. Deacon Robert will be having that, but to help with the funeral, there won't be adoration. And then I'm gone on Saturday. I'm going to leave on Friday night and do a quick up and back to the Twin Cities, um, so I won't be around for adoration on Saturday. But the church will be open. If, you need, if you'd like to pray, it'll be here. And the Blessed Sacrament, of course, is always in the tabernacle, so you can pray there. But we just won't have our normal, ordinary times of adoration. We'll pick it up again next week, the week after this, in other words. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 572, This Day Was Made by the Lord number five seven two 